Now that you've connected a Luma and Snowflake, you can get started by adding new inputs. Here in the plumbing screen, you can move to the top left of the screen and click Add New Input. You can see we have a lot of options out of the box, but if you don't see something here that you're trying to work with, of course you can do CSV files or JSON lines in an S3 bucket, you can send real-time events to a custom webhook, or you can use our REST API reader to actually read events at a periodic basis from whatever REST API you're working with. Maybe let's add Salesforce to get started. Once I hit connect to Salesforce, it's going to ask me to authenticate. I'm going to allow this. I'm going to give this a name. And you can see we have a few objects out of the box ready to replicate by default. You can of course remove or add the ones you prefer to work with. Once I'm finished, I hit create input. And I've successfully created a new input. Now, once you've created an input, within a few minutes, you should start to see data replicating in the live view. And really, that's it. It's that simple to get started to load your data. In fact, I can even hop over to Snowflake and show you the data in action. Perhaps I want to take a look at the source of my leads and figure out where things are coming from. So I'm going to query the lead source for my leads object. You can see here I have a few different options, but you know, it might be easier if I check this out in a visualization. I'm going to hop over to Looker, and maybe I'll add my lead source detail here. And now I start to get a pretty good sense of where my leads are coming from. Now I've shown you how easy it is to get started with the Luma, but keep in mind there's a lot more power in the platform. For example, data errors are unavoidable, but you don't want that to stop your whole pipeline. So what Aluma does is it takes any erroneous events and pushes it to the restream queue. You'll get a notification, you'll be able to rectify the error, and then restream the erroneous events into Snowflake without issue. This won't stop good data from flowing, it'll just make sure you don't lose the bad data. At some point, you're probably going to need to transform or enrich your data, and you can do so in Aluma's code engine. Here, you have the ability to use Python code to split events, discard events, enrich the data with GOIP resolution, anything you can imagine with Python you can do so here. You can even run tests by getting samples and running a test on the code directly here in the environment before you deploy it. Keep in mind Aluma is a real-time data platform, so anything you send via SDK, webhook, really anything of real-time nature should be replicated to your Snowflake literally within seconds. It's very quick. If you're working with something like Salesforce, MySQL, a database for the first time, it might take about 15 minutes to start seeing your data, but from then on it's real-time as well. Now that was a quick overview of how to get started with Aluma. There's a lot more power in the platform, and I recommend you check out our documentation on our website to learn a little bit more, or if you have any questions, reach out to us at support at Thanks.